Okay. That's what I thought that is. Scandinavian kings. Scandinavian kings, right? Frankish kings, the Trojan king. Check it out, okay? So let's go back to the document. So. Sorry. Sorry. I'm saying hold on. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Okay, here we go. What y'all seen is other information that goes with the was the Israelites in Ireland. Some of them, some of them documents that popped up. I was gonna be finishing that, but here we go. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can find my place. Okay. The white Indians was massacred. They was killed. White Indians was massacred. Uh, Okay, it says contemporary to the account soon connected to the story of these of this Welsh Indian tribe with the Madoc legend believing they had found the descendants of the Welsh of the Welsh voyagers, right? Because they said when these when they went out on the second voyage they never returned, right? Okay, I want y'all to check this out, right? says stone fortification and mounds map of stone fortifications and mounds right and mounds right then it's say like something else down here I, i'm not even gonna worry about blowing it up okay but i'm gonna read to you uh the description it says these earthen fort mounds at devil's backbone along the ohio river were also believed to be the work the work of Welsh colonists. Uh, those desiring and uh, authoritative source for the collections of the uh, legend concerning Madoc. Okay, it says should consult Reuben, and he has a book. It's called The Traditions of the of the Earliest Visit. Vi there, excuse me. It said the title of the book is The Traditions of the Earliest Visits of Foreigners to North America. Okay. Okay, it's some other stuff to this document, but um white Indians, blonde hair, blue eyes, light hair, blue eyes, okay. Okay, so we just gonna uh, I'm gonna hit y'all with this fair use act real quick. And then I'm about to get into it as soon as I find it. Excuse me. How have your day been going? I hope you are having a marvelous and wonderful day. Marvelous and wonderful day. So um <clears throat> go back into my videos um let's go here real quick hey if you check out was israel in ireland you will find some great information about uh a lot of the nations over there before the europeans came in were were melanated and strong is strongly going towards that they were related they were the descendants of Jirah Judah and therefore since they were the descendants of Jirah Judah they are Israelites right but this white man these white people are you know they don't usurp them so they're saying that it is them and they have a great history and it's that and third but we know we dodge all high we swerving on hijacks and as we serve swerving on them we are collecting jewels at the same time okay so don't get stuck on when they keep talking about them 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 they're really talking about you 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 okay <laughs> but check that series out you know uh, in there, um, I pinpoint on uh, King Drop, you know, when he's talking about the the nations of Israel, you know, that were over there and these places, Britain, Scot, Scotland, 
um, Ireland, you know, a lot of the, those kingdoms were set up by Israelites, and they were Israelite kingdoms first. And then the barbarian, you know, wanted, they wanted war, they, they wanted to take over, okay? So with no further ado, let me get to where I was getting at. I feel like I'm just talking and talking and talking and talking, and I don't want to be talking y'all head off. So, I'm going to take it back. Assyrian Foundation. Thank you both very much for coming in. Wow, wow. Yeah, we're going to get into them two King Arthurs. King Arthur the first and King Arthur the second. Y'all don't see the dates? Coming up in this half hour, Chris Maddock and King Arthur and Merlin. Did they once visit Kentuckiana back around the 7th century? Kentuckiana. We'll also in this half, talk about the first Europeans to come to America. We're not talking about Columbus 500 years ago. No, it's possible that Europeans were here in Kentuckiana uh, in about the year 574. I'd like to introduce you to two gentlemen who are holding to that theory. First of all, Jim Michael of the Ancient Kentucky Historical Society and Alan Wilson of the Arthurian Foundation. Thank you both very much for coming in. Now, who wants to tell the story about these ancient explorers? Uh, Jim, you want to start off? Well, I'll start out. Uh, basically, you've got it right. Uh, 900 years before Columbus, it appears that there was a vast migration, maybe uh, 70,000. We've got 500 boats, 700 boats sailing. Uh, ten manuscripts that he'll talk about that uh, have not nailed out. They came, uh, we've got the archaeological evidence with it. What is the archaeological evidence? Okay, that's slide number two. Oh, okay. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead. Uh, first of all, we've got... Before we go on, said 900 years before Columbus, these white Welsh discovered America. 70,000 of them left. 700 ships. We know at that time, if that is the case, then that is our family coming back to the Americas. Okay? Coming back to the Americas. 70,000. Come on now. Not them niggas. But I digress. Let's go on. That was that one we have here, slide number one. Oh, oh that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's a, uh, we look at that. That's fine. That's still okay. good. But that is a uh, chunky stone, they call it. It's in the museum at, at Lessing. It's found by an archaeologist, uh, head of the archaeology department, U.S.K. But you notice at the bottom of it, there's kind of a broad arrow on it. Uh, next slide. I sent this over to Alan Wilson, and he sent me back, uh, there may have been 50 of them found in Troy. What did you make of it, Alan? Wilson? Well, it's, it's a relic found in Troy, where the Welsh originally claimed origin. Uh, it has on it an Alwyn sign. The Alwyn sign is the basis of the Welsh cauldron alphabet. Mm -hmm. It's the alphabet that's the root of all this. And where was the stone found? It's Harden Village, which is up by uh, 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 Portsmouth, Ohio, that area. Mm -hmm. How old is it? Uh, sixth century probably, but it uh, have they carbon dated? Or no, they can't carbon date stone. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it uh, was found in thirty nine by William Webb, the head of the Department of Archaeology. Therefore, it exists. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, Celtic cross. If you look closely, it's got a circle around that cross. But more importantly, 
It's got the three chevrons of the kings of Glamorgan, part of their shield. It goes all the way back in the Bible to Genesis and uh, uh, is one of the 12 tribes. Alan, tell me about the kings of Glamorgan. Uh, I'm not sure exactly this. He said the kings of the Mormons. In Europe, but something that's um, a skeleton in the closet. Mm-hmm. Never saw it. Uh, you won't find it in the uh, school curriculum in that? Okay. Uh, it's possible that it uh, offends the monarchy. History has generally been structured around the monarchy and promoting the monarchy in the UK. They said that symbol for this. Uh, what they just showed, this right here. This. This right here <clears throat> is a Celtic shield, okay? Or is that a rock? It probably be a rock. It's a rock, but it has the cross in a circle. And they said this was a this was on the Celtics coat of arms. But he said this picture, the symbol in the cross goes back, and it says it had three um three things on it. Those th- that whole bit goes back to the Israelites. Okay, we're gonna hear it again. Hopefully it's got a circle around that cross, but more importantly, it's got the three chevrons of the chevrons. kings of Lamorgan. Part of the kings of Lamorgan. It goes all the way back in the Bible to Genesis and uh, uh, is one of the 12 tribes. Alan, tell me about the kings of Lamorgan. Uh, I'm not sure exactly history, the best we saw in history. Sound like you're saying the kings of the Mormons. Um, a skeleton in the closet. Mm-hmm. Never saw it. Uh, you won't find it in the uh, school curriculum. Why is that? Okay. Uh, it's possible that it uh, offends the monarchy. History has generally been structured around the monarchy and promoting the monarchy in the UK, and this is a little bit uh, of a better thorns for them. Now, this is what I find uh, fascinating. King Arthur, who I thought was mythical, mm. I didn't think he, he ever existed. The monarchy don't want to talk about it. That means the 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 king the kingdom in England don't want to talk about that the that the founding of their of their countries and religion and arts and all of that started with the Israelites. Remember, in four or in three. This the same guy. He states what? What do we? Oh no, the other in a in the other video with uh, Britain Israelite three thousand year Israelite heritage is fact. It's saying that video that what that they buried the founders of their nation and it was the Israelites indeed. They buried the Israelites. And they are constantly trying to bury us. They have, they are been suppressing information and everything. And a monarchy over here don't want to talk about it. Don't want to address it. Out of sight, out of mind. This is except in Walt Disney movies. Mm-hmm. You're saying that King Arthur's brother, Prince Maddox, mm-hmm. died here in Clark County, Indiana, and that, and that King Arthur very possibly visited Kentucky. Yeah, the the, the, le- the legend is, is English. The facts and the history is Welsh. So you've really got the light side and the dark side of the moon. Uh-huh. There's almost an iron curtain across the board of information doesn't change the past. You can find uh, school books up to 1920 in Wales where Arthur, the son of King Myrig, the grandson of King Chudrig, of Theodric, being taught as fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a centralization of history in the UK out of London to teach everybody the same story. Uh, stuff like, what do we say, yeah, historical antagonism and so on. And they throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's as simple as that. No, the throwing the baby out with the bathwater. The manuscripts we're talking about are the greatest authenticity and antiquity. Um, many of the records written by a man named Taliesin, who in his poetry it says, "But I am Berlin, and men shall call me Taliesin." Mm-hmm. The entire intellect. So it's possible that uh, everyone actually is here. The records are very clear. They tell of uh, a comet striking Britain in the mid sixth century. Mm-hmm. Something like the Tunguska, a common strike in Britain in, in, in the, in the, in the middle 6th century. That's right. To take to the ocean, that's right. Come here to America. Jim, I want to ask you one last question. Is it possible that this was Camelot? America? Kentucky, Anna? Sure. 
What a wonderful thought. Uh, we think we know where Camelot is over there. They <coughs> think they know. To answer your full question, uh, we know Arthur was killed here in this shipped out of here, probably 14 miles north of the falls. Uh, he said, King Arthur was killed in Tuckiana, was killed in America, was embalmed here, and his body sunk back. Okay? So, what's really going on, y'all? What is they really saying? You know what I'm saying? And don't forget the more on more war, black on black. It's a family affair. It's a tribal war. And these people ain't part of the tribe at all. Okay? Let's get it going. If Zerah Judah went there and settled and had offsprings and kingdoms, when they came over here, wouldn't it be some type of riff if his brother got the birthright? See, it goes way deeper than this. That's why we constantly have to stay in the most high word, constantly stay in the law. We have to meditate on the law, meditate on his word, meditate on him. Because boy, oh boy, seems like King Arthas was killed here. This might be Camelot. Over the Ohio, there's no over the Ohio. We've got a stone that was set up in his uh, uh, launching. Amazing. He was mummified, wrapped and put in his golden armor, wrapped in deer skin and taken back and hidden over there. I'm sorry we've run out of time here, but you have a more time tomorrow night to explain this at uh, Jefferson Community College at uh, 8 p.m. in the Hartford building. That's the Jefferson Community College downtown. Also on October 27th at University of Louisville's Extrem Library, that's the main library on the main campus, and then on October 30th at the Oldham County High School Auditorium, and Jim Michael and Alan Wilson, we thank you very much for stopping in this morning. That's Captain Bridget Hopkins. It's 16 minutes away from 7 o'clock. We'll be back with news headlines and the weather right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Jefferson Community College. This program tonight is sponsored by the Humanities Division, and I would like to uh, recognize somebody who's been very important in helping put this program together, Jeannie Ferguson. Jeannie, would you stand, get a nice hand, please? <clears throat> The two people you're about to see tonight and some of the evidence you are about to see tonight perhaps will be just a bit startling. I know it was to me. Remember over here, I've got Glenda over here who was doing a research paper in my class on the mound builders. And Glenda said to me, oh, by the way, this weekend over at Ivan's home, they're having a gathering and they're going to be talking about King Arthur in Kentucky. And I